Yeah, you know, um, this yo, this platform is uh, is humbling me. It's my own platform that I created, Commerce <laughs> yeah. Africa. But this particular uh, slot where we talk about uh, professionals and uh, entrepreneurs, we call it Commerce Business uh, Connect. Yes. But we take it from where you started to where you are so that when people do business deals with you or build partnerships with you or join ventures with you, they should have they should know who you are. No, that's very true. Yeah. yeah. So but at the same time it humbles me in the sense that the things that we take for granted that sustains us, we don't talk about them and we, we don't even get to know about them. And then yeah. you, you, you wonder, what do we think sustains a country? Yeah. You know? So you, you are the ambassador of this particular profession, and the way you're talking about it, nobody will have educated me uh, uh, unless I go to your conferences where you go, and it will be so boring because at the conference, they won't be telling me your story. They will be telling me these highly sophisticated research papers and then it becomes boring. Um, what, what, what I would, I, in, in agreement of what you're saying, um, one of the things that we 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 find ourselves like this discussion with you, it's it's quite free because one is engaging, but we have got this tendency of being squeezed into a program where you just have to talk like you are rapping or you are singing. Now you, you it, it takes away you who you are. Then you you must just uh, teach people whatever that you know. Now that that changes the way uh, uh, a lot of all, a lot of uh, if you look at the way South Africa does business mm. with the tendering process and them, you can't tell a story now because now in a tender system they they, they will say they want the lowest price. But then if you are going to compete. On a price, then you can't tell a story. Then we miss the most important aspect of saying, why would one have to be doing the environmental studies? We have missed an opportunity as a country, and you are very right. Mm, mm, yeah. Because we want, uh, I mean, I mean uh, if I heard your story while I was still in metric, grade 12, because I did biology, I did agriculture, I did mathematics, I did economics, and then I did Africans, English, and Spedi. I was a I was a, I was a real candidate for this. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> if I had your story, then I would say, "Listen, my brother, take me there." <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. I mean, we career guidance is is quite key. But I mean, if you remember the time when we were being taken to a, a career guidance, you get exposed, you get to be at a at a place, and then uh, there, there's a lot of groups that are coming, and uh, there is no that uh, conversation and uh, now you just go and get to be taught okay there's a can a, a course like this or you are given papers to go read for yourself then some of those papers never reach home so that's how our career guidance had failed yeah wow yeah so now after finishing how long was your degree it was three years three years and then and after then three years science, yeah three years yeah, three years, and then management is uh, four years. Oh, I said you continued your studies. No, I did. I did my degree, and you know, if you can just imagine uh, doing honors and masters and all those things, and then uh, you have got the many siblings behind you, so you would sound like you are being, you are delaying others, or you are still putting pressure on parents. So I just did my degree, I passed my degree, and move on. I see. So you studied while you were working. Yeah, I went to, I came to Jobek. Um, I, funny story, I had to work in a bakery with a, a friend who was, was not well and they asked me to, to sit in for him. I went there and then uh, from there I delivered the newspapers uh, in the streets and then uh, uh, in the, while I was there in the streets, one of the, there was time when I wrote to the management of Kexton and say, we are delivering newspapers while it's raining, why these newspapers cannot be put in plastics and them. Then they asked who's this boy, and then uh, that's when they gave me a scholarship to study my journalism. By that time, through their partnership with the University of uh, Pretoria. And that's after, while after that story attracted uh, various companies, um, Eskom, 
uh, and and uh, private company. And I so, so for company. them, for them, they were just having a boy there who knows nothing. His job was just to sell papers, and they were shocked to find out that yeah, we've got a degreed person here selling newspapers. Yeah, no, those, that, I mean, remember, they remember that that we were not selling; we were delivering house to house. So some of the people will ask you uh, why a young person like you doing this job. And some of, of, of the people there would, would recognize that this, uh, compared to any other people that we've known delivering newspapers, it does seem to be different. So, yeah, that, that paved the way for, for me. But then that's when I would say that when you are working for certain companies, you are just a resource for uh, production and that's it. Something that uh, I'm picking up out of the my engagement with some of your homeboys and homegirls from coming from Venda. There is this humility about the Venda people yeah. that, that seems to be almost caving pathways for them. So, so I've spoken to a couple of people who come up out of University of Venda with degrees, but the first jobs are always, you know, you always ask yourself, why will somebody with this qualification do this job? But it looks like uh, that humility somehow carries you along. Yeah, but the, you would know that the, now when you look back from your family, you have got a long queue of those that need to qualify. And some of the families where they were not fortunate, they will have to, to, to take their own brothers back to school. Now, any job that would make income was okay. But again, we didn't have a pressure of, we were not known, you come to Joburg, it's not your own area, do what you are told, and they get paid, and then they go home and eat. And then when you go home, then nobody knows how you made your money. We we, we were motivated by guys that were working in the farms in Anitio, but today we didn't know that they were staying in the sharks and all those things. Mm, mm. So, let, let, let's, let's, let's tell your story further. So, how long were you selling distributing papers? No, for two years, for uh, one and a half year, I is when I worked at the news at the bakery, and four months, I think six months in the in the in the newspaper, then in three months to deliver newspapers, and then another nine months in the in the in the writing of stories. At the at the at the at the, at the newspaper offices. At the, at the, yeah. Now when I was doing. Well, oh, you studied office. journalism, by the way. You said. Yeah. And, and uh, how long was it? Was that a year, a year course? It was a year course, yes. And, uh, and, and, and you enjoyed it? Yeah, actually, like, remember when you went, uh, initially I wanted to do communication. So uh, PR being communication, I knew that uh, journalism gives me that uh, uh, part where I would still be doing what I needed to be doing. So, mm. I, I, I mean, also to improve, coming from... Um, an environment where you studied from the first grade to the last uh, day at the university where you have never been taught by a white person. So you would need to improve your grammar very quick. Mm, mm, mm. So with journalism, it did assist me a lot, and I, I really enjoyed that. I just didn't like when it started about to be about writing about people and all those things. I, I mm. It was not me. I, I, I was not interested in uh, personal life. Yes. I was more in, interested in writing about social uh, life and the environment which I understand mm. and uh, maybe entertainment then that was that was it yeah and and, uh, and when you were doing these other odd jobs you didn't get worried that you were shifting away from your what you studied chances are that we, I never felt anything it's it's it was just worrying when somebody uh, reminds you that you have a degree. Uh, from Venda there, earning six thousand rand, it was a lot. I see. So, so you... yeah. So you 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 were just worried that I should not be uh, failing when I've got this money. That's it. That that was the the, the own the main thing. The, the 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 fact that you I deviated or did it did not click. It only clicked later when one started to think, mm. uh, what am I? Yes. And and at that time, did you realize how important this degree was? No, I did not even know what will I do. Um, if I was to work for ESCOM, I was not. I was not clear of my my my, my role there. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So you know, you come from a university where you are taught by mostly foreigners, 
from Ghana, Tanzania, they and uh, they they know the subject. They don't know the dynamics of the country. So how you would uh, help a, a company to save the environment? It was not very clear. But I mean, also the ignorance. This was not necessarily about the lectures only, but also the fact that I am doing this degree for my parents, and uh, I want to be known that I've qualified. Not necessarily why I must be qualified. We are. South Africa is a country we are very lucky. You know, yeah. a lot of things have been done by trial and error, but they just happen to be perfect. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Eh? That's true. I, I mean, I mean, it's always like uh, there's always first supply, and then we respond to supply, and then we do whatever is available. There wasn't always like. We demand to study one, two, three, because this is where the country wants to go. Let's build the schools now, the universities accordingly. We always have things supplied, and then we respond. I'm talking specifically also for us as Africans. Yeah, but I mean, if you look at, at, at uh, uh, our, our, our um, uh, political leaders, I made a post, I think, a few days ago, and I was saying that apartheid was bad. But apartheid was good because um, uh, what, were, what were they doing with the minority? They were transforming uh, young uh, people or mentoring young people to become uh, entrepreneurs in many ways and self-sustainable. Mm. With freedom, freedom is good, uh, but freedom is bad because everybody believes everything must be free. And when you have got everything that is free, you don't have the ambition. Of becoming anything because in any way if you fail to 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 get a job you can still be a, a mother and be given certain amount of money mm. so I think the, the we lost it when we we got freedom and uh, most of the people that were supposed to lead us were in uh, coming from exile without an understanding of local uh, dynamics mm. and we accepted anything without doing an, a, a proper due diligence mm. so that's when when you have got you are accepting a country in a vacuum you you didn't know where lies the economy where lies the 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 the, 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 the agriculture where lies the the issue of your your um, industries that's why immediately um the, the, those leaders all of them, most of them, they, they focused on becoming a, 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 a minister at a what what in the in the in the in the in the field, and forget that you are a minister of uh, of, of let's say agriculture, mm. but the, you are leading ninety percent of people that do not own a piece of land, mm. 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 and uh, you you didn't have the now you realize when you are seated. It's like I gave you a car that we call it foot stood. Then when you start the next morning, it doesn't start. Uh, and I told you, don't call me. <laughs> you own it. Yeah, this is yours. So, that's so, why so are, you, are you now, you and your peers, are you influencing policy now? No, not, no we do attend uh, when, when we are required. But I mean, uh, one of the things, um, not to deviate from our discussion, one of the things that I like about COVID was uh, we were now in a country of conferences where everyone will be so happy to be an MC of something and forget any technical uh, uh, um, skill that needs to still be part of our lives. So the, the departments would mm -hmm. be a, on a workshop to discuss a policy and then uh, to have another workshop to, to undiscuss the same policy. So meaning you, you go in and change a policy without having been implemented at all. So mm. no one wanted to be a runner. So now mm. this poverty that has been created by COVID is going to create more runners. And when we have got more runners, there is dust. When there's dust, there's economy. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I like. Now, it has taught many of us uh, to, to re-look re and rethink things. Yeah. And yes. now, so, so uh, after that, when did you decide then to to start your own company, or did you to continue with other corporates? Uh, yeah, look, uh, from two thousand and three, I worked for companies, and uh, the the fact that you know when you come out from rural areas, uh, apartheid was not really bad. That we would be so afraid of a white person. 
So and and also the fact that I I was a bit uh, more sophisticated based on the journalism part that I played and the training that I had at that journalism. So when I get into an environmental company, I would quickly know what they are doing, mm-hmm. and uh, that that obviously came as, as a as a challenge to most of my bosses. So mm-hmm. I never worked really for a year in a company. So. Within a year, two to three months when I'm in the company, I need to be knowing how they do the proposals and why they're doing what they're doing. So most of the bosses were not really very comfortable. Then some of my pillars, uh, pillar, my pillars then they did tell me that, guys, you, you need to be doing uh, your own business. And in 2005, um, I, I registered the company, but it did not operate. 2007, I, I left. And yes. what I did was um, I started doing uh, small jobs and odd jobs on my own while still working. And then I decided in 2007, when I got a bigger contract, then I left. Yes, it. And, and what, what are the deliverables of your company, the products and services that you offer? Um, we, 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 we help companies uh, to up, uh, apply for environmental permits and authorizations for their developments. Yes. So in, 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 in part of those uh, studies that are required are environmental impact assessment and uh, water use licenses and then a geotechnical studies and uh, geohydrology, um, the, 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 the issue of your waste management licenses. Mm-hmm. Those, that is what, when I wake up and going to work, I, I'm doing that. I see. And, uh, and what's the name of your company? Uh, my, my company, I've got, uh, our, let, let me put it this way. The company started as Chikova Environmental and Communication Consulting, excuse yes. me. yes. And then, um, yeah, it did well, very well until 2014, 15, when obviously as a business you needed to to understand where the country was going. Mm. 2013, 14, it was the time of greening, the, 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 the issue of climate change and all those. Then we um, registered a company called Discover uh, Green and Climate Change Advocate. Mm. Mm. where you need to align because not everyone would then be googling a company that have done uh, environmental studies only that they will look at also company that does greening mm. so we we went to be in a greening uh, company so that's that's Chikova green and a climate change advocate is the company that i'm trading in with though the Chikova environmental communication consulting still operate i see i see yeah so so the but you are staying in the environmental space. So you are consultants, basically. I am a consultant, yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. we, we, I mean, the other, the others, um, I do, I do have a, a communication company that I've not really pushed too much. But if you see any branding that we've done on my website and uh, everything we have done, we do that. I, I write the content myself. Yes. Then I also have the Chikoba Times, which is what I, my own way uh, of writing. When I want to write, I write it under Chikoba Times. So mm. we haven't pushed that also because obviously we you still trying to make income through uh, your normal consulting and, and these others are still obvious. But you, you look at it when you are no longer active in the environment, you, you then decide what is it that you want to do. Mm. Then you are able to do writing. But you don't want to register a company this week and then be too disparate for certain things. So you need to register companies when time is still there. Then I have got an NGO that we do, which is to call Graduates Academy, where we uh, uh, focus on helping other other graduates to be exposed in the in the field of environmental science, communication, and other others. So depending on what does the, 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 the client wants, we, if they are to, they've got projects that they want to implement for graduates, for skills development, then we identify the gap, the area in which, which they want to, to assist us on, uh, to assist graduates on, then we, we implement that. Wow. So, so this type of discussions very much suit your, your foundation work. You mean the, 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 I've heard the, the, this type of discussions that we're having on this platform, they appeal to your develop foundation. Uh, yeah, no, it appeals to my personality as a person. Uh, I, I would, I would not want somebody to have gone to go through 
what I've gone through when there's so much opportunities now. If, if I mean, I always wish um, I was 22, 23 yet now. Mm. I think my my life would be quite different. I think I would I would I would be a good millionaire through um, I mean up to thirty years mm. because there's so many things that one can do. Yeah, and and how is competition in the in the industry? Are there many of you doing the same thing? Or? Yeah, there is there is many of us. But um, look, the, the the unfortunate part with the industry is that it traditionally it was an industry of many white companies yes and uh, traditionally uh, companies being a bigger company you would need to have big offices bigger uh, um, um, uh, marketing uh, money and all those things but in terms of uh, being in the market and being competent in the market mm. uh, i don't have a problem with that yes we we currently because of um, lack of jobs people are, are Doing entrepreneurship as a fallback yes. uh, from their from from the, their, their careers, so that person I would not call a competition because they can only compete with me over a price. Yes. Um, I find I find my my company uh, and 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 every now and then I don't I, I always tell my employees I don't stay with an employee for ten five years ten years because. I don't. I don't have patience. I don't. I don't have. Uh, you. I develop people. You find your path. We. We become competitors, or you I do something it. else that you want. But you know, it wouldn't have a, an impact that I want to make with an um, ancestors in my office. So I, <laughs> I like to to develop people, and the the more we develop each other, then we become collaborators or co -op, uh, we co-opt the skills rather than compete. Mm, mm. Yeah. Wow. That's a very nice way of looking at it, and uh, and but the transformation is you saying is, is happening now. It's no longer just transformation in the industry is there. the unfortunate part. Like I said, is that um, with with, with the, the government like now we're saying we need to have uh, registration bodies like uh, you are in, in in the law accounting and everything like that. But that coming in when you already have over 5,000 environmentalists in the, in the field, it, it becomes a red tape to many who are not even uh, now when you know. I grew up at the time where I could hop jobs. It doesn't have a problem. Mm -hmm. But at this time when you really need that job, now they are coming up with um, new requirements. Then it becomes a bit of your, your red tape. But mm -hmm. then we were doing well in terms of bringing in more black companies, but most of the, the challenges that we have is that uh, most of the white people that are leaving bigger companies and starting their own companies and starting as individuals, they are very good at collaborating and managing the projects, and then we are not very good at collaborating, and yes. uh, that, that becomes because we don't trust each other, and people besides the trust, uh, we are charging very less. Mm -hmm. So when it, when when you are competing on a price, um, you you can't bring someone. It means it's like especially even now after COVID, if you get a job that gives you two hundred thousand and you don't want anybody there, then mm -hmm. it kills the intention of transformation. Yes, yes. Because now you 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 want to obviously to hold on what you have, and then even if you can't do the job, for people like me who have been in the field for 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 a long time, it's good. That now, if I get a job, I know that I've got these three guys that can help me quickly, mm -hmm. rather than you know going through the whole developmental process of a graduate at a point of um, business uh, strain. Mm -hmm. I then then use uh, freelancers. Then I get someone who's good at this one, or good at that one, and then they, we we deliver uh, uh, at high speed, and then we get the income and move on. Mm -hmm. But when things are stabilized, we, we, we really focus on just taking graduates. We don't even do interviews. We help them. And we, we have done that for, if I calculate people, then the number of people that have helped, they are over 300. Wow. Wonderful. So, so yeah. as you said, there is, there is growth in your company, so to say. Yeah, growth is there. You, 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 you always have, you know, that's what we, you need to always remember that Growing should not mean having, you know, I tried it before, having branches, then you, when you have too many branches, there's too many people, then you don't manage business, you end up managing infrastructure, then 
you lose focus. Then I had to understand what does being, uh, what does growth mean? Yes. What does uh, being big means? Mm. Then uh, it it made more sense when one had to avoid uh, being being uh, naive in, in in growing. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. So what will you say uh, uh, is your value proposition? Why why should other should the clients come to you and not go to next door? No, we 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 obviously for companies, we always say to ourselves that we 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 we, we will work with we work with our clients within uh, their uh, their specific required scope mm. within specific timelines. And, uh, and 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 we never fail in what we do. Wow. Yeah. And you have we have other environmentalists working under you. Yeah, I've got uh, currently we've got uh, twelve people that works for us directly, but we also have other um, six or seven people that we we call when we have got more work. So they are your associates. Yes. So at least there is collaboration of some sort. No, we do have collaboration. I believe in that. Yeah, you can't run a business without those. No, we can't. Yeah. Wow. Um, so so you, you you have transitioned from being a specialist to you are now an, 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 an inter- entrepreneur, but the, and you are the CEO of your company, so you are also in a business management. Yeah, I, I obviously still prefer to call myself a... a, a a, a, a manager or a leader rather than a CEO because I think uh, CEO they say you must have a board and, and all those things I don't have a board but they are mostly I lead uh, my organization and um, when I call myself as an entrepreneur is because besides uh, the fact that uh, I'm an environmentalist I manage mostly one of the things that is part of still part of our value proposition is still that we we are scientists that can communicate. Not most of the scientists can communicate. Yeah, because of your insight into communication. Yes. And then, uh, what about technology? How how are you integrating into the technologies of the of the four IR? Um, we 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 are we are going there in terms of um, if you look at the the, the industry itself. Mm. You, you, you would have to go to the site to do um, your environmental uh, really assessment on site. Yes. But you can actually, currently, you can go use your Google to find the area that you, you are looking for. Mm. The issue of water testing, you would wait forever to go collect samples of water and go and get that data uh, in, in many days that you have to wait. Mm. And then uh, you will still have to do geological tests, having to go to the site and take forever on site. Now you have got technology that can help you understand the type of soil that is in this area mm. quickly. And mm. uh, that that is one thing that is a competitive edge to, to others. And also uh, in terms of your um, report writing, you can... I mean, actually sit with your computer and be telling the computer what you have... Uh, found on site and then it can then it obviously create a document when you it creates a document you are able to just edit and finalize but if you go back uh, in those areas mm. you know you will go to uh, uh, to to, to Deben, but you still had to travel to uh, these areas where you have to to find the, the 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 computer in the office so that is one thing that you needed to to do at that point mm. Yeah. Wow. What a journey. Yeah, it was. It is an interesting journey that we we have had. So also, I mean, there's an an, an issue of recycling and uh, waste management, which is a different technology. That uh, also the whole uh, different setup mm. within the industry that you 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 can consider going going to to it. Also, the issue of carbon um, uh, footprint that you can also consider. Mm. So those are the those those are the most important things that one had to also consider as part of uh, technological development. And and you are working towards those, or they are already in your. Yeah, system. we we do have programs on on recycling and waste cleanup and uh, recycling mm. in order to develop um, also create jobs and also develop communities. Mm. Is there an association of uh, 
of industry, industry association of this of, of your type of work? Yeah, we we we, we have uh, what we call environmental um, uh, association of environmental practitioners, which is uh, mainly starting now. It has not been there. It is only now when we we are registering and also. What is uh, SACNAS? Well, I forgot what it stands for, but it is also um, a society of natural scientists. Yeah, it is one of those societies that are that are there. So, but one of the things that um, I have to be honest about these societies and the and, and and bodies is that it looks like they they are more worried about you having been being a member rather than helping you with anything because mm. you you hardly will find programs that. Mm. Uh, are there to develop graduates and uh, people in the field. Mm. You know, I, I, I know most of, of these guys having sending me invoices rather than sending me any information about my industry. Mm. Yeah, it's a yeah. pity. And, and I think sometimes these this, this, uh, uh, associations, they, they, they lack capacity. You know, you find that they rely very much on the same members who pay their fees to belong to them, to volunteer yeah. their time to help them for... In a way, it's, it's understandable, but I think I think uh, the, the infrastructure must be there so that you as members can benefit from your membership. No, reality is that it's not acceptable. Um, we, 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 we should not be, uh, be, be suffering for because of that. What, what I think is that we, we, this industry should not be, or this body should never be developed as a pattern, a patterns to restrict certain people from being uh, in the field. So mm. I think somewhere, somehow, we have that tendency. So, you mm. know, the industry just need to be honest with it itself, especially the environmental sciences. There's no, there's no way that um, we can, we can, we cannot uh, develop people when we've got so many uh, people who have retired, who are seated at home, and we've got so many graduates that are not even aware of how can they develop the a business of recycling or tourism within their their villages. Mm. So I, I would think that it's a matter of ignorance. Yeah, sure. This is so important. We can talk forever, but this is, I'm sure it is enlightened listeners out there, and it's good to have connection with people like yourselves, because then at least we could, we, could, we could have a reason for following the industry. And it's valuable. It's very important. If we don't sustain this environment, we have nothing to, 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 to show for generations after us. No, we can't, we can't do anything. We, 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 when we, you know, failing is, is it's, it's inevitable if we can't look after the environment. Absolutely. So how do people get a hold of you? I'm sure there are people out there that uh, would like to engage with you. For many other reasons, uh, I hope there will be uh, uh, emerging students at, at, the, at, the, at the high schools that want to do this profession, and, and, and also potential policy makers and clients that may want to engage with you, because I can feel the passion in you, that you don't just run a business, you want to make a difference for the country. Yeah, for me, um, I'm, I'm, I'm well... Um known in the industry, but obviously uh, being known does not necessarily mean that people know what you do, but I'm known as an environmentalist because I, I, I advocate for environmental management and environmental conservation. So when, mm. when companies are looking for someone who can assist or collaborate with them to create a, 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 an environment which, which is sustainable for them, Mm. Uh, I can be found at uh, mainly I'm on social media, mm. uh, Facebook with Modi with Zeni and mm. then um, the company you have Sikova Green and Climate Change Advocate on on Facebook page, mm. and then I've got uh, 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 also my own profile and also my page is still Modi Modi Yes. Then I've got um, you are um, LinkedIn. I still Modi Modi and then uh, the company is still Chikova Green and Climate Change Advocate. Then it can link to other 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 companies. Yes. Then and, uh, and, in terms of num and the website, sorry, the the website is www dot 
dot co dot za it's called as t-s-h-i-k-o-v-h-a mm-hmm. and then for green it's www.climateadvocates.co.za mm-hmm. and then um, obviously my cell phone number is 076-431-1016 mm-hmm. 076-431-1016 uh, the easiest email is m-o-u-d-y at m-o-u-d-y modi at modi dot co dot z-a Mm-hmm. And then you can still get my blog on my own personal website, www.modi.co.za. That's where you can also link to everything that I do. Mm-hmm. So in in, 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 in nutshell, um, I'm easy to find on internet. My name is unique. Uh, if you say Modi, chances are that yes. um, I will, it will be it the will first one. Out. So Modi is M-O-U-D-Y. Yes. Yeah, short for Mohammed. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, lovely, my brother. It has been wonderful talking to you. I get educated every day as I talk to you guys uh, and, and listen to your, your the great work that you are doing. And 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 the future is still great. We have just begun, as you you indicated with the COVID nineteen. We are now refocusing ourselves. No, I think that is that to me. I'm, I'm, I, I, that's why I said I appreciate more of of these opportunities. Um, we, I, I would say to younger people out there who want to be in business and who wants to be um, and being entrepreneurs and other things. What what is more important is uh, being in a platform or in a media platform should not change your course. Um, the cause meaning you, what is it that you want to be doing and the purpose of being what you're doing. So sometimes we get into um, radio a space like this, then the next thing we we look at ourselves as you are you are public figures who must be motivating others, but forgetting that they they are environmentalists or they are any other people. So one of the strongest uh, point about myself and my own reputation is that. I don't deviate from what I am and uh, what I'm about. Mm. So that is what what I, I always refuse. That in as much as I can talk, I, I'm not an MC. And as much as I can talk, I'm not a motivator. Um, uh, I, what I do can motivate someone, but I don't do motivational speaking as as part of a business. Because yes, it, it's easier to be paid to do motivational speaking when you are an environmentalist and you forget about the environment because. It can give you income. Mm-hmm. So many young people are affected by this. And remember, media uh, platforms are very good, but you, you don't live there. They are for marketing purposes. So when mm-hmm. you are at this space, you, you can get the noise and forget that uh, uh, fans are not customers. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. when you have got a lot of fans, mm-hmm. you might first find that you, 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 you wake up to the noise that you are doing well. And then later find out that you that well that you are doing have not uh, yielded anything. Absolutely. And also the other thing, the last thing is being in a business, you should be able to calculate whether you are making money. Most of young people now are suffering because after COVID-19, you have to look back at your business and see, are you able to make money? If you can't make money, then you can scale down. And if you don't know where you make money, you can't, you don't know where to scale down. Mm-hmm. And you you might be strained or stressed because you are not making enough and then you look busy because you can't price. So that is very important for me. And I, I really appreciate the, the platform from your side because it really changes the way we look at ourselves. And when we share our stories and the stories that we listen that are being coming from other people, one can realize that you are not necessarily alone in business and what you ever uh, can be doing is either business or your business. So mm. when you are busy, then you when you calculate the money does not correspond with the busyness, then mm. it, it does it does show that you are not in business, and it's frustrating many young people. Absolutely, absolutely. Well yeah. said. Thank you so much uh, for your time. We really have enjoyed having a conversation with you. We look forward to many more in the future as we continue with inspirational work that we are doing. Thank you very no, much for your so time. Much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that was Modi. Uh, he's given you all your contact. I mean, his contacts. You can feel free to get hold of him and uh, engage for whatever reasons you might have. 
That was uh, Komaza Radio Africa. I am Sam Zima, the CEO and Executive Business Coach at Komaza GOC International. Our website is www.komaza-goc.com. Uh, we want to encourage you to consider taking membership with us at Commerza Friends and Supporters Club NPO, either as individual or corporate, and join the movement in building our nation and our continent. The website for the Friends and Supporters Club is www.commerzaclub.africa. You're welcome to send us email at callcenter at commerza-goc.com or admin at commerzadevelopment.com. We thank you and we look forward to welcome you at our next broadcast. Goodbye and take care.